Hey everybody, Uniservo here, and today we're going to look at another weird IBM thing. You guys know I like weird IBM things. But first, I need to take care of some business, some long overdue business, and actually thank my patrons. So, didn't know if people wanted their names fully, fully uh, blurted out, so abbreviated the names here. Alexander E., Chris, Eric G, Glass Monster, Holden H, Holger K, Jeff M, John P, John F, Mark B, and Nick G. Hey, thanks, guys. I will clear up, uh, you know, about privacy and anonymity and all that kind of stuff eventually uh, when I get organized on Patreon. <laughs> anyway, let's look at this thing. It is an IBM 5235 time entry station. I think that's the official name of this thing. And uh, it's a big gray box that hangs on the wall. And uh, this is part of the 5230 data entry system. And this was kind of a neat product. It's from the mid-70s. Apparently it was developed in uh, IBM Rochester, although this this one's got Canada all over it. So it was probably developed in Rochester and uh, moved across to the border uh, and actually produced by IBM Canada. And uh, it was a whole system that uh, consisted of a control unit and some other bits and pieces and uh, a number of these things. The idea was you stuck these all around your business, like on, at the factory, where all the workers would shuffle in and shuffle out every shift or so. Or maybe in a place where you wanted to track who is where. Maybe labs where eh, sensitive stuff is happening. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, basically, this reads badges. Yeah, you know, like the badges you have to work for, uh, have to wear for work. And that is indeed what this slot is for. The idea was that the 5230 system, uh, I think the 5231 is the controller, which I do not have, unfortunately, uh, basically set up this network of these things. And yeah, probably extremely proprietary because this was the mid-70s. And uh, the idea was it would take data collected from these things of who was basically logging in who was logging out per shift or whenever and logging who was in and out and how long they're taking for lunch and stuff like that the idea would was it would transmit the information back to the mainframe and uh well when companies used to do their own payroll very few companies do that anymore Every, everyone's outsourced payroll but in the old days, like Ford or Chrysler or probably even IBM itself, they probably did their own payroll. They had a mainframe in the payroll office and every week or whatever, they'd run the numbers. And using these guys here, all that would be automated. No one would have to do the data entry to find out that Bob Smith, uh, looking, uh, looking at the, you know, the punch card saying, oh, he logged in here, he logged out there, he logged in, he was late for work on Tuesday. Nope, all automated. So, uh, yeah, IBM was uh, trying to automate the, the work system. Now, these, like I said, were, were connected to mainframes, to 370s, of course. And from the list, it looked like lower-end 370s, but also uh, apparently connected to Series 1 mini computers of the same era. So that, off, that, that opens up a whole range of possibilities what these could be used for because s1s were real-time control and uh, so hey maybe these were used to uh, grant or deny access to labs or machines or who knows let's take a look at this thing okay there are some tags and well <laughs> they're upside down so <laughs> pardon me while i do that so, yeah, yeah, tags, the usual bunch of IBM stickers, aluminum stickers made in Canada, which is interesting. 
going back upright, and that probably made everyone motion sick. Okay, well, come on, focus you. All right, let's look at this thing here. Most importantly, we've got where you stick your badge. And I assume green and red mean, hey, we read the thing right, or red. Uh, green main, means, uh, yes, we did it right, read it right, or red was card read error. You know, kind of like when you go to the gas station, you've got an ancient card and it says card read error. I bet you that's what that's for. Now, apparently there were some uh, other options for entry. I think this is the mag stripe version here. Uh, you know, basically like, like a credit card. But I think there were also an option to do the more or less traditional punch cards where you stick the card in, the machine goes clunk, and it literally punches a hole in the card. And, but I think there was a reader, and that's where this went. Uh, it went in this panel here. This option is not installed. We'll get to the insides in a minute or so. Going up, we've got some uh, keypads and some other buttons here. Yeah, so you could probably have, you know, ent entry locks and say, hey, you need the code of the day or whatever. And uh, up here, we have green, yellow, and red, and, and a section for, I believe there are seven-segment LEDs back there behind the, uh, the smoked plexiglass uh, window there. And I guess, I don't know, maybe green means everything's okay, and yellow means something, something's wrong, and red means security's coming to throw you out. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I should say I don't have docs for this, so uh, I need to have docs for, for this or, and any of the rest of the system. So there's a certain amount of guesswork here. Uh, there is a key, which I don't think I have. Now this unit I actually purchased on eBay. It was kicking around for a while. You probably saw it. It was supposedly new in the box, which I believe it, it, it is unused. Uh, and I'll show you why in a minute there. But uh, the box was open, uh, the box was in terrible shape, and I don't think that the key was there. So, you know, shelf-worn, I guess it was. Hey, it was incredibly cheap. And also, I was passing by the place, you know, like right by the place. It was like five miles out of the way. Uh, where was it? Down in Maryland, maybe? I forget. But so it, it was kind of a gimme. I had to have it. I had to have it. It, it was cheap. Um, yeah, it was probably about two years ago. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Picked this thing up, and uh, the box was so so ratty, I threw it away. But I don't think I got the key. However, we can still get into this thing, which uh, I think we ought to do right now. So, hold on. Try and do this without making a disaster out of it. Put it down. All right. Oh, first off, I should show you the... The interface to this, which of course is weird. So yeah, here's the power cord. It's a twist lock, and you can see it's got this little uh, doohickey seal thing on it, which is kind of neat, which leads me to believe that yes, this thing was never installed. And also, it's an in, fa in fantastically good condition. And then, and then of course, here's the weird interface. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Focus. So anyway, let's get the cables out of the way and look at the innards. All right. Well, we can start out here. We got the power switch and you can see it's your classic 70s power switch or one of the versions of the classic 70s power switch. We've got a uh the power supply there and <laughs> danger 550 volts what the hell are they doing in there well it looks like there's a ferro resonant transformer in there and yeah i, I don't know i, I know a ferro resonant transformer can generate a fair amount of voltage you know especially if things get weird uh but really 550 volts i have to when I eventually get the documentation for this, I'll have to see if this... I wonder if this thing could run off a of 480. That'd be kind of weird. Eh, you know, factory floor. Got 480 everywhere. Anyway, yeah, so we got a, a, a simple brute force power supply. And there's the, the filter there. Uh, I don't know why they had to make it ferro-resonant, but they did. It's IBM. You know, what do you, what, what do you expect? Up, up forward here... This would be the top of the unit. 
Uh, we have a, a very small card cage. There are only two cards there, and unfortunately these plastic things kind of get in the way, but as you can kind of see, there's not a heck of a lot going on in there. I think, I think this is a fantastically dumb device. You know, these plastic things here seem to be just for holding the cables. Yeah, there's, there's not much. There's a tiny little uh, card there, which looks like just a header for ribbon cable, maybe. But yeah, not much else going on in there. Got a little card here that well, it doesn't look like it does much, actually. But I suppose the fun thing is, is this device here, which is the Mag Stripe Reader. So you can see it's got a guide and spring-loaded, so it shoot your card back out and there is a uh, I don't know if we can get in there in there let's see I don't know why is my phone not zooming there we go see in there it looks like we've got um, probably the head right there and we've got some shielded cable right in the center there you can see the heads up to the card. So yeah, the, the cards probably up there have got basically the read amps and uh, you know the other stuff to turn it into an actual bit stream. You know, it's not much of a bit stream. It's only a simple mag stripe like on a credit card. And I suppose there might be a little bit of the uh, the error checking going on in there. I don't know. You know, it could be the error checking was all being done by the control unit, the big box that sat in the computer room. The, I think that was called the 5231. And if it had an error, a read error, it may have shot it back here to turn that red light on. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there's there's really not much of a way of a brain in this thing. And I, I'm kind of blown away by the size of that capacitor. <laughs> I mean, this is not a this is not a big power hungry device. In fact, what does it say for the uh, one phase two wires? Yeah, the, the typical IBM. They're saying it needs a 15 amp branch circuit. Well, I'm gonna guess it doesn't actually take <laughs> all 15 of those amps, but it probably takes a fair number because generally ferro resonant transformers suck a lot of power. So. Uh, <laughs> interesting device um oh a little, another uh, weird tidbit of that i found out doing my research apparently in uh in 1976 the minnesota society for professional engineers declared this as one of the uh seven wonders of engineering in minnesota okay all right you know i don't know i i think that you know 76 well, you got uh, all the control data people. You think it would be this, be a bunch of engineering awards going to them, but apparently, I don't know, maybe it was IBM's turn that this thing got a nice gold star for its work. Well, whatever. You know, hey, good job, guys. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what am I going to do with this thing? I don't know because I have no docs. And they don't have the, term, the, the control unit, and I have no idea where I'd find the control unit. If any of you guys have the control unit or the docs, I'd certainly like to hear from you. You know, maybe I should uh, put this uh, by my front door as you walk in. So if you want to get the golden ticket, you literally have to have a golden ticket. I'll, I'll paint a bunch of uh, old credit cards with uh, gold paint and and uh, you, got, you, you, you put it in the machine and well, it's uh, red, yellow or green. That's it. That those are that, those are the outcomes. And hey, if it's red, start running. Okay. Well, that is the fifty-two thirty-five. Hope you liked the video. Blah blah blah. Subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, maybe <laughs> I do have a Patreon account. I'll put a link down there. Hey, a dollar, a dollar a month helps a lot. $5 a month uh, helps five times as much. <laughs> now, really, seriously, a dollar, I, I appreciate every bit of it. Things are pretty slow here, so the dollar shall be used very well. Hey, I got to feed the cat somehow. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.